was here last week? Last Sunday. Michael, stick your hand in the air. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay. Anybody got any testimonies from last week? For those that weren't here, to be blunt, we just sung Ye Mani Lee. God is with us here. To say, quote A.W. Tozer, God is always present, but it's when we recognise his presence, normally his presence manifests itself, i.e. he comes. You hear people lots of say that, oh, God turned up today. Ever heard that? Yeah? God's always here. It's us that's the problem. Well, it's true. There's times I come home and, and, and Joy's been out in the garden, she still is in the garden, I've come home and I've said, hi. Get nothing back because she's not heard me. And then the sun she'll appear, she goes, oh, you're here. Yes, you recognise that I'm present in the room. It's the same thing. God is always present in the room. We do not recognise it. Or him, sorry, not it. Recognise presence it but we recognize him. So, last week, there was a sense of that going on. Anybody got any testimonies coming out of that they would like to tell the church? What happened for you that day? It doesn't have to be, oh, and it was amazing for the rest of the week, but just, what happened for you that day? There's a reason for this that will eventually become apparent as we go. <coughs> Carol's present. Hello. Um, all week, God has been reminding me of um, that um, vision, that image, that he, picture that he gave me of, a, of the sponge being saturated with the Holy Spirit. And not, nothing new there, but it's just been emphasising. So the sponge, you picture the sponge, a natural sponge. If it's saturated, every time something comes in contact with that, some of that water leaks out. So we need to keep being filled all the time. So it was just God re-emphasising that to me every day to ask God to fill you with his spirit and to make, make me aware of his presence with me all the time. Otherwise, you get dry. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? I know there are some of you because you spoke to me. Even if it doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. That's not the point here today. So this is from last Sunday. So I'm sorry, I know this excludes a number of us this morning, but... Um, usually I, I worry a lot, but this week has been... I've been filled with peace. I don't know where it's from, but it's like I'm empty. Okay. What happened to you on Sunday, Brooke? I don't know. It's just the Holy Spirit. I just felt taken away to another realm. Okay. Thank you. For those who might be wondering what happened, uh, Brooke, um, the term is used slain in the spirit. Basically, she fell over. I had to catch her, which was really annoying on the grounds. In fact, I popped all my muscles that week, and I was on strong painkillers. That did not help. But that's not Brooke's fault. That's God. We've had a word. Anybody else? Um, I must say God is with me all the time because Monday morning I went to the school to take my grandchildren. And the dog, I, uh, I saw a lady stand with the dog there and another one. And the dog bite me here. And I was so bad I fell over because I'm a diabetic. And I have to go to the hospital Four hours I was in there, and I had to go back to the doctor on Thursday. And if it wasn't God, I wouldn't be here this morning. So I give thanks to God, and he's in my life every day. And I can feel him, and I know God is with me all the time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Daphne. Amen. Amen. Anybody else from Sunday morning? Even if it makes no sense, don't worry about it. Yeah, um, because like it was Pentecost, usually I feel really on fire 
and excited. But this year, I felt very dry, and we was talking about the dry bones, and I just felt like God was doing a new thing in me, yeah. Cool, thank you. Michael, oh. Um, last Sunday, I came out and um, I think uh, two people came to pray with me and and I, I, I was really, really low and down because there's a lot of issues that I'm not going to go into. But I was expecting something to happen beforehand and I've been waiting. I needed to get an email from somebody to know that um, they have uh, got what I sent to them and it wasn't happening. And it's a very important email that I had to get. And nothing was happening and I was giving up. But that week, <laughs> last week, after what happened in church here, there was um, a message on my phone saying, oh, we are looking at that issue right, right now and call me and we need to set up a meeting uh, and everything, it was like, like um, everything was uh, fast forwarded. So that's the only way I can explain it. And cool. yeah. Thank you. Michael, I'm coming to you. You've been pre-warned of this this morning. Yes, I mean, everybody was worshiping and all of a sudden I just felt massive weight just into the presence and it was an awesome feeling. You had the power of God working on the extremities and this weight just sitting right there. It was like a counterbalance. And at first, being a coward like myself, I wanted to run. But then it was so annoying that I spoke to it. And then they tell me to pray into it. And as I began to pray into it, I really felt drained. It was a heavy push. I felt physically drained. During the week, I had some struggles. But the important thing that we have to learn that whenever God moves, whenever his Holy Spirit is moving, there's always this counterbalance. And we've got to trust God that when he says he will heal, he always heals. And even if the church, because the church is about to move forward massively and there's a push against it, we have to push forward. Even like this morning in worship, and you know, you can speak to John about that, but let's just, I just stop there. No, you're copping out. <laughs> You are copping out. You are copping out. What did you say? I mean, it was just a passing comment. So this morning we, we were again worshipping and, and we felt, you know, the worship was going forward, but then there was this pushback. And I think that we need to pray this through. I think there's a lot more healing. There's a lot more miracles coming, but we need to take... I mean, we have been given the victory, but... He's not, Satan's not going to come and give it to you as a gift. It's your gift already, but you've got to take it. If you don't take it, you're going to lose it. Well done. You're still copying out. What did you see last week? I saw a heavy weight. I saw the angels around. They were, they, they were kind of ministering a scene, and then I saw this weight just come and just sit right in the center. So you had the God angels ministering to people around. There were some people who, they just allowed this weight to just come and just rest. I've got a baseball bat in my office. I'm going to use it in a minute. Come on. Um, so what happened to you? What did you have to do? What was going on? Because you are copping out, and I know you are. There was a need to get in there to, to engage in spiritual warfare. Actually, the actual word one is an actually demonic warfare. Actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with demonic forces and say, in the, in the power of God, through God's blood, through God's word, you know, we've been given dominion power of so scorpions over serpents over the truth. We have the Holy Spirit in us. You need to leave. And actually engaging in that warfare was very draining because they pushed back and I just felt that whole weight upon me. It was a very uncomfortable feeling. Give him a round of applause. Recognizing the presence of God. 
does mean it becomes manifest. He becomes manifest. The spirit is at work. I'm going to make a bit of a thing. I have all Michael's. I, I grabbed him this morning. He, was coming, he thought he was just coming to do the sound. You never just come and do something. Ever. Michael, make you laugh, what happened was he was over here wrestling. This was last Sunday. And um, I just sort of had this sense, what's the battle that's going on within you? And the battle was what he was seeing. Excuse me, don't panic while you're here. But um, what was going on around here, yeah? Okay. And so here is where there are angels. You all want to start worrying, but it's okay. Uh, God is... The problem is, Michael knows this, he knows I'm going to say this, he's got no problem with saying this, but he was worried about standing in in praying. So I said, you've got to go stand in there and pray. That was the last thing you wanted to do, wasn't it, Michael? He actually, we placed him here, right? I want to go and get him a staff, because I think he needs to hold a staff as a warrior, praying into that situation. As I'm grabbing the staff, Michael, by this point, is back over here. Go, no, 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 no. Had to grab him. Say, no. Stand. There was somebody last week when I preached on Ezekiel 37, and I said, imagine seeing the dry bones together, a valley of dry bones coming together. How would you feel? That person turned around, and it was a man, turned around and said, I'll run away. If you were here last Sunday, you know who that was. We can't run away anymore. We can no longer run away I said, sorry Michael I was going to bounce around with the office I'm, it's not my this, I said to Michael I said it's always a problem he said well I didn't expect to see it here in this church what why now hang on a minute before you all sit there and go really Michael let's all look at ourselves for a moment do we expect to see it in this church? If you go into the mission field, some of us expect to see stuff going on. Because we're out of our comfort zone. We're out of Greenford Baptist Church. It doesn't happen in this church. Oh, yes, it does. It doesn't happen in this country. Oh, yes, it does. It's happening all of the time. The problem is we do not recognise it because we're not looking for it. We're not engaging in it. We don't want to see it, do we? Yes, we do, but we don't want it to involve me. Thank you, John. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. Yep, let's just do that. Uh, 2 Kings 6. Just, can you just bear with me for a moment, please? Thank you. 2 Kings 6. Uh, this is to do with Elisha at Dothan. I'm just going to open up really quite frankly um, because the point is this. Uh, so uh, verse 14, 2 Kings 6. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God, i.e. Elisha's servant, got er up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, Oh, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of Fire. Once his eyes were open, he saw the reality of what was going on. We tend not to see the reality of what is going on because we look at the physical 
material. We look at this and go, that's real. It is. But it's not as real as what is going on right now within the spiritual dynamic, which is happening right now in this room. Notice I've not called it a church, because you're the church, I'm the church, we are the church. This is just a room that we meet in. I was saying to somebody yesterday, uh, I am getting this sign, I have really got to order this sign, I've got to do the measurement. There's going to be a sign out there that says, welcome to church as you're going out. Because the reality of what is happening is we need our eyes open to because it's happening out there and in here. The problem is we think staring at Song Pro and the screen and worshiping God is reality. No, it's not. The reality is what is going on that we can't see with our physical eyeballs. Michael would not have been able to see anything that was going on if he just tried to use his physical eyes. Uh, what I like about the Elisha servant is he was going out just doing his regular chores. He just went out to do his regular chores, sees his physical army, and he thought, well, I was just turning up just to, I don't know, sort out breakfast. And then his whole world gets flipped side down when he sees this army, and it gets even flipped more upside down when God opens his eyes to see what's really happening. Is actually there's this vast army, and this is what's really happening in the spiritual realm. Michael turned up this morning thinking he was just going to do the PA. Or Michael might have just turned up. Sorry, Michael. You love me, brother, yeah? Good. <laughs> Michael might have turned up last week, thought, I'm just going to do church. You might be turning up to go um, to work tomorrow. I'm going up to do work. Some of us, it might be work, inverted commas. But you're not turning up just to do work. You're turning up in the spiritual realm to make a change, to see what's really, hap what's really happening. Could you bear with me? Sorry, I don't normally... Just, just bear with me just for a moment. Just give me a second. I will do. I'm just finding the right time. If you could bear with me. Who's sick to death? Who is sick to death of people not knowing Jesus? Seriously, who's sick to death of it? Who is sick to death of people not knowing who Jesus Christ is? Who's had enough of people not recognising his name as their Lord and Saviour? Who's had enough of actually his message being watered down and becoming nothing? Ah, that's starting to have an effect. Who's had enough of actually laws and rules being made that actually is trying to do God and Jesus out of the system? Who's had enough of other places and other... Oh, I'm going to be blunt, I'm sorry, I don't care where you're from. Who's had enough of other faiths and religions pushing against where Jesus is meant to be sitting? Who's had enough of people being deceived by other faiths and religions and atheists and secularists and the whole lot? Okay, could you say your piece now, please? No, it's just that no, it's fine. Um, <laughs> two weeks ago in our own church, which is in Manchester, um, some of us met to pray or to seek God, really. And, to, um, and there was no liberty for that until first we had praised the Lord and worshipped because the praises of God... He inhabits the praises of his people. So if you are wholehearted in your worship, which is what 
I think we were, we were like a nucleus of people. Yeah. We were not the whole church gathered, you know. And one of the young girls who's not been a Christian very long, she said that afterwards, she said, before we spent time and praised the Lord and worshipped, she had no freedom to pray. She didn't feel strong enough even to pray. So also when... Um, and God goes to war, should we say, he sent the musicians ahead yep. uh, and they brought down his presence, if you like. Um, I mean, we don't have to bring it down, but I mean, we have to allow it's recognizing for his, it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know whether that's any. That's perfect, thank you. Oh. Brilliant, it was at the right timing. So bear with me a moment, and that's the point. You're sick to death of that happening, but how many of us actually praise God in every day and every morning? Actually start the morning praising God for who he is and for what he's doing, from where he's going to take you today. Because that's the point. The Lord is a warrior. And you use that very word. When God goes to war, say to say, God does go to war. For the Jewish people, the act of worship was going to war for God. They saw that as an act of worship. Because God told them to go. But they went praising and sanctifying themselves first. We don't need to do the sanctifying bit. Jesus has already done that on the cross. Amen? Amen. But to push against all of this stuff that we all just said we're sick to death of, to push against the enemy and to actually reclaim ground for the name of Jesus and to reclaim the ground of our friends and family and work colleagues and everything else and this entire nation and every nation around the world... We've got to engage in it. Every day we've got to wake up worshipping God, focused on him, saying, Lord, your will be done today. Worshipping God is actually about saying, God, this is your will now, not mine. Today's your day, not mine. Amen? Amen. I want us to be honest with ourselves. Honest with yourself. Do you really, seven days a week, say, God, today is your day? I like that. Somebody just heard say, just, just rush out. Well, if you just rush out, you're not prepared for the day, are you? And you're not prepared to see what God's going to do and what is actually really going on. Amen? This sounds naggy. Talk to God about it. He's trying to encourage us because I am, we are sick to death. I will use that. Sick to death of watching Jesus' name be squashed. Sick to death of people getting deceived. I had... uh, um, yeah, I'm going to tell this story. Uh, on Friday morning, I was nice and comfortably um, at, at home uh, doing some study because I needed uh, just to do it there. And in the morning, then my door knocks. I'm thinking, oh, great, got delivery from Amazon. Here we go, Amazon again. No, it was two gentlemen who follow the Jehovah's Witness faith. Can we just... I, I, I like to say this again. I, I repeat this quite often. I, I don't like the fact that we say... Oh, that person's a Muslim, or that person's a Hindu, or that person's a Sikh, or that person's an atheist. No, they're not. They're a person made in the image of God who happen at the moment to be following that particular faith, or of no faith. There's a distinct difference. So you heard me say, two gentlemen who were. And in the end of all of it, I couldn't help but after 45 minutes of having them uh, sitting with us, and they said, surely we're doing all the right thing. We're just going around telling people to create good families. And I said, that's not good enough. Actually, what you're doing is heretical teaching about who God and Jesus is. It is no longer good enough being nice. It doesn't work anymore, my brothers and sisters. Being nice is not what we're called to do. We're called to... Love. 
and to display the love of Jesus. Now, how did Jesus do that? Well, he did that with preaching. And preaching doesn't mean just gobbing up the front. But he always was backed up with what? Teaching and healing. Power. That's it. When he preached the gospel, it was backed up with power. When the apostles preached, it was backed up with What we saw last Sunday was God powerfully at work. That was power. Now, some people might have got a little bit freaked out about some of that and thought, what's going on? Especially when you saw Brooks and he go, and then wouldn't stop shouting for ages. When you saw Michael was shaking, if you actually looked at him, he was shaking, shaking quite violently he was here. And with people were being healed. You don't have heard about them, they're not here this morning to give testimony for that. But that's God's power at work. Now I could go into Acts 2 and Pentecost and remember they thought they were drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's what God's power, when he's at work in us human beings, looks like at t- sometimes. It's because our physical bodies cannot contain God. We have the Holy Spirit living in us, but when he gives out full... <laughs> This is sometimes how it manifests itself. But it's God's power that is at work. And we need to recognise the presence of God every day with us for his power to be able to manifest itself through us. I very strongly believe, and I'm not alone in this, debate, argument, has had its time in the West. It has to be the power of Christ through us that is going to convince people of who Jesus Christ really is. Some of you might well be going, yeah, but I'm not good enough. God won't use me in that way. Well, he won't if we have that statement. (laughs) By the way, amen, welcome to Pastor Warren's life. God does use us this way because it's not about who we are. It's about who he is through us. If he can use Peter, the coward, scared of a slave girl, 50 days down the line to preach to all his fellow Jew men, yeah, about who Jesus was and 3,000 came to faith that day, he can use you and me all of the time if we allow him, if we recognise his presence. Can you do that? Recognising his presence. It's not, believe it or not, I used to thought it was like rocket science. How do you do that? It's not hard, really. You just go, Lord, you're here. And rest in that. Does that make sense? Not sitting back, laying on the bed and going to sleep in it. Mind you, you can do that if you want. But actually resting that he's present. Not because of anything you've got to do or you have done. Not because, oh, hang on a minute. I didn't say me 15 Hail Marys this morning or something. I don't mean that in a rude way. What I'm trying to get at is some of us, that's almost like we we think we need to go through some sort of ritual. Does that make sense? You know, oh, I've not read my 23 chapters of the Bible this morning. God's not going to be present with me for the rest of the day. That's not true. It's resting and saying, God, this is about you, not about me. This is your power at work, not about what I manufacture. We've, this morning, not made any reference yet to Thursday's election and the current outcome of a hung parliament, other than my um, jokey comment. People have been shooken by that and are nervous. Why? Jesus is on the throne. 
sorry, why is, why are you nervous when Jesus is on the throne? You get the point? But the problem is we put other things on the throne, not him. We actually put ourselves on the throne half a time. Or we put our, sorry, let's rephrase that. We put our faults, our faults, F, I'm going to say that right, F-A-U-L-T-S, our faults on the throne, not him. So no wonder nothing happens because we're putting our faults on there, not Jesus. We put other things like money, cars, status, clothing, fashion on the throne, not him. We think, if I look good this morning, I found myself, I caught myself this morning, thinking, oh, I better choose the right waistcoat to go roughly with the right trousers. So I've got to look good at the front. Oh, this tie's not going to work. So I put away the red one and put this one. I thought, oh, people are going to probably think I look a little bit miserable. <laughs> at which point, that's quite a normal look for me. <laughs> but I just chose to gold. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why. I just grabbed it. I thought, but put a bit of colour. And afterwards, I thought, what am I worried about what you think I look like? <laughs> what does it make any odds? That's not going to bring the power of Christ into the room, is it? It's going to be about recognising who he is. Got nothing to do with how I look. So next week, it's going to be T-shirts, shorts and sandals, all right? <laughs> but I have, whoa, 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 whoa. This is really, done. this is really important. This is really, really important. This is really important. Hang on a minute. Should it matter what anybody looks like if they're standing here and preaching and the power of Christ is at work through them? Should it matter? Is God's presence not going to be here because I might be in my trunks? No, 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 seriously, no, you laugh, but think, think, does it make any odds? Not one jot, does it? What it, what makes the jot is us recognising God's presence. And if it distracts you, because clearly you think, there's a man... If it distracts you, then the problem is, my brothers and sisters, you are looking through human eyes. You are not looking through the eyes that God wants you to look through. And I would suggest we spend a large chunk of our time doing that. Yes, I agree. I'm only making a deliberate uh, hyperbole statement because Paul says to win over a Greek become like a Greek to win over a Jew become like a Jew absolutely we should not put anything in the way that's going to make people stumble don't panic I'm still going to come dressed like this (laughs) but the point I'm getting at is that's what we do we see through the human eyes and what's going on in front of us not through what God wants to show us if Michael decided not to bother to allow the spiritual eyes to be opened, I don't think anything would have happened in what had happened further on because the battle that was being fought in this area would have won. Not God, Satan. He would have had much more impact than what was going on. But Michael needed to stand there and pray into it. The presence of God is with us all the time. But not there just for us to feel nice and safe and comfortable. I hate to tell you that, but that's not the sole purpose of God being present. God is always in a battle. Yes, he's won the ultimate victory in Jesus Christ, amen, and it's all going to get sold up. But there is a constant battle going on. There is proof by the very fact that what Michael saw. We're in a battle, my brothers and sisters. When you signed up to become a Christian, you joined the war. So when you're sick to death of watching your friends, your family and neighbours not know who Jesus Christ is, why is that? It's because they're in a battle. They're being blinded. And what we need to be doing is praising and praying into it all the time. And I know some of us don't like the word should, but welcome to being a Christian. You should be doing this. We should be recognising the presence of God if we want to see his power at work. Yeah? (coughs) 
I'm just going to say this. Why do we do sinful things? It's because we don't recognise the presence of God. We actually ignore his presence. Presence in our lives and the presence in the room. If we're on our own and we do sinful things, it's because we think nobody can see it. Hello, he can. And he cries and weeps every time because we've just taken ourselves out of the battle. And he wants us always engaged and with it and listening to him and engaging in the power. Amen? Amen. We can no longer come and play church. It doesn't work. Belinda was brilliant. Her theme, Redeemer, Redeemer. And we came out with some brilliant answers as to what it means as Jesus as our Redeemer. But he's also the Redeemer of the people around us. And using that redemption was the power of the Holy Spirit at work and the power of Christ on the cross. And the power of the God the Father by, in love sending his Son. What it means to redeem, it means to claim back. And that is how God uses us as people. He uses us to claim his people back to him. And he does it in power. Zechariah 4.6 says, not by power or might, but by my spirit. I want you to talk to God for a minute for yourself. Reflect with God among those last words, not by power or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What does that mean for you in your daily life right now? Just between you and God. you to take a moment and just recognize the presence of God we're actually going to wait on God we said that a lot last week we don't wait on God enough just recognize his presence say yes he's here you're here
God is here. God is here. And for some of us, it feels really uncomfortable. For some of us, it's time to get out of the boat. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.